Thanks again for coming back. You're listening to Cool Jazz Geology. I'm Tasha Thakahatchee. And I'm Lillian the Philly. Let's take a look at 5.8 other volcanic landforms. Calderas. I was taking it away. Sorry, I took it. Calderas are among the largest volcanic structures. They form when the stiff, cold rock above a magma chamber cannot be supported. I love that word, magma. And collapses, creating a broad, bowl-like depression. No one likes a depression. Well, I like these. On shield volcanoes, calderas form slowly as lava is drained from the magma chamber beneath the volcano. On a composite volcano, the caldera collapse can be a catastrophic event. Catastrophic, like like when somebody forgets to bring me a beverage in the afternoon. That would be catastrophic. That would ruin my day. That would. Lava domes are thick masses of high viscosity, silica-rich lava Rich. that accumulate in the summit, <laughs> summit crater or caldera of a composite volcano. When they collapse, and nobody likes to collapse, lava domes can produce extensive pyroclastic flows. They get flows. so angry. Yeah. Fissure eruptions produce massive flows of low viscosity silica pore lava from large cracks in the crust. Layer upon layer of these flood basalts, like a cake, may build up due to signif- uh, build up significant thickness, as in the Columbia Plateau or the Deccan Traps. But their defining feature is the broad areas they cover. Nice. A superb example of a volcanic neck is preserved at Shiprock, New Mexico. That is superb. It is. Because the lava in the throat of this ancient volcanic crystallized to form a plug of solid rock, it has weathered more slowly than the conical volcano in which it formed. I'm sorry, did you say plug? I sure did. Now, after the mound of pyroclastic debris has been eroded away, the resistant neck stands up as a distinctive landform. How? Stand up, boys. How? There you go. Fascinating. Let's talk plate tectonics and volcanic activity. 5.9. Volcanoes occur at both convergent and divergent plate boundaries. And You'd also, know what that meant if you were in the class. I actually do know what that I'm means. I'm just saying. Are you surprised that I know what that means? No, I think it's awesome. <sighs> And also in intraplate settings, different mechanisms supply the magma for each. Convergent plate boundaries that involve the subduction of oceanic crust are at the sites where the explosive volcanoes of the Pacific Ring of Fire form. Ring of Fire. That's right. Here, release of water from the subductive plate triggers melting in the adjacent mantle. Subductive. The resulting magma interacts with the lower crust of the overlying plate during its ascent as results in the formation of a volcanic arc at the surface. Fascinating stuff, Lillian. At divergent boundaries, decompression melting is the dominant generator of magma. As warm rock magma. rises, like it's wont to do, it can be begin to melt without the addition of heat. The result will be a rift valley if the overlying crust is continental, or a, mid- a mid-ocean ridge if it's oceanic. You like that oceanic, don't you? I do. In an interplate setting, the source of magma is a mantle plume, a column of warm, rising solid rock in the mantle. A plume. A plume. Let's look at 5.10, monitoring volcanic activity. Now, volcanoes tend to give off physical signals, which... Like men when you date them. (sighs) All sorts of signals. Sorry. Sometimes mixed physical signals. That's right. Men. Volcanoes give off physical signals, which volcanologists monitor for signs that a volcano is getting ready to erupt. Volcano monitoring involves observing changes in the shape of a volcano. Earthquakes beneath a volcano that can signal magma movement. What's that? The composition and quantity of its gas output. That's a lot of gas. And its temperature. Hot. That's right. Everybody, study well, do good, get an A. That's what we really like.